Hi y'all, this is the husband from Texas Roadrunners. Today we have 10 things you need to know before going to Acadia National Park. Number one, plan your trip for as long as possible. The wife and I planned on going for a week and we ended up staying for three. We could have definitely stayed longer, so the, there's so much to do you're not going to run out anytime soon. Number two, the park pass. You're going to need to purchase a park pass on or before arrival. You can purchase it online. You can get a weekly pass for 25 or an annual pass for 80. We assumed we would visit other national parks during the year, so we opted for the annual pass. And that worked out really well because we only planned on staying for a week and we ended up staying for three. We would have had to have bought two more passes. So... I recommend the annual pass, and that's $80. Number three, try to stay in a location that the Acadia Park buses pass by. Download the Acadia map, or at least take a look at it, a look at it online, and try to find a place um, that is on a route. The bus doesn't have to stop there because the, bus, the buses will stop any place that the driver deems it safe. So if you are, are on a route and you wanna stop halfway between A and B, just let the bus driver know and they will stop. They actually have stop cords um, that you just pull and the bus driver will pull over at the first safe place. If they see you standing on the side of the road, they'll stop and pick you up. Uh, the bus system is completely free we stayed at uh, the Acadia RV Park. They don't allow reservations. You just pull in, and if they have a site, you can stay there until you want to leave. Number four, do not drive your rig in the park until you are very familiar with the routes. The park map shows 13 low clearance bridges. And I'm here to tell you they are low. Even your standard small RVs cannot get through. This is a picture I took of a guy that was not familiar with the height of his rig and you can see this is not a big rig. Number five, get an app that shows high and low tides. This park is a lot of activities are very dependent on high and low tides. Uh, for example, low tide activities. If you want to walk to Bar Island, you have to do that during low tide. If you want to do tide pool exploration, look for starfish and crabs and whatnot, that's something you want to do during low tide. Uh, if you want to kayak the ovens, I would recommend um, seeing the ovens at low tide. High tide activities would be um, kayaking back from the ovens. If you can plan your trip so that when you go out to the ovens, you're going out during low tide, and when you come back, you come back at high tide, that's going to give you the easiest kayak. It's a long trip of about three miles each way, so working with those tides is definitely beneficial. Uh, if you're going to go to Scudic Point, and watch the waves crash on the rocks. That whole area is just mind-boggling. Um, it's beautiful with the rocks and the waves crashing. It, it was captivating. Uh, Thunder Hole is another one that depends on the tide. That one there is about two hours before high tide is when they state it's most active. So those are some examples of low and high tide activities. Number six, plan on driving to the top of Cadillac Mountain several times. If you're a picture taker, you'll have the opportunity to get beautiful sunset and sunrise shots. But unless you're super lucky, you're going to have to make several trips. We went up there several times and uh, we, got, we got some good shots. Um, but even with the number of times we went up there, we didn't have... As, 
as pretty as what I was hoping for. The sunrises are also beautiful from up there, and those are over the harbor, Bar Harbor town. So you want to plan several trips up there. Number seven, dogs. Dogs are not only are they allowed in the parks and on the trails and whatnot, but they're also allowed on the buses. Uh, this could be one of the friendliest dog um, parks in the nation. They, there was dogs everywhere and people didn't have any problems. It was, it was really nice. We're dog lovers, so it was really nice to see dogs on the buses and enjoying the hikes and stuff. Number eight, medallions and the stamp book. Uh, we didn't know either one of these things existed. They have a stamp book where you can check off your national parks. You buy a little stamp and you put it in your book and then you stamp it with the date. So you can look back and say, oh, on this day we were at this park. And that's a great little addition because after you start traveling around, you really tend to forget about all of the things you see because you see so many great things. And the medallions are a little bit more um, specific. So if you, if you go to the top of Cadillac Mountain, you can get a little medallion for that. Um, if you go to, if you hike the beehive, you can get a medallion for that. A lot of people take those little medallions and put them on a walking stick. And that's something we plan on doing just to have as a showpiece. They're really pretty cool. Number nine is the weather. Now, I'll admit, I've been living in Texas for 20 years. But there were times that it was downright cold in the middle of August especially on Cadillac Mountain watching the sunsets. I didn't feel too bad because many people had heavy jackets and blankets. And the same thing goes for during the day. If you're hiking the mountains, uh, you get to those summits and it's windy up there. It can be pretty chilly up there. So you just have to be aware that the weather on the ground isn't going to be the same as a summit. Uh, sometimes it's super foggy at the top. Sometimes it's foggy at the bottom. So you really want a good weather app. The weather app that I've found so far to be the most accurate no matter where I tend to be is the weather bug. Number 10 is eating. Um, first thing, you have to have a Jordan Pond popover. If it's possible to go there when the weather is nice, it's a beautiful view. You may have encounter of the bee kind, though, depending on the time of year. When we were there, there were bees everywhere because of the jelly that they serve with the popovers. But man, they are super delicious and they're made when you order, so they're nice and hot. The, the um, Jordan Pond is super popular, so I recommend getting a reservation. And at that time, you can ask them about the bees. You can reserve inside or outside. Down East Deli has the least expensive lobster rolls at the time that we went. They were several dollars cheaper. They were delicious. And they had many other deli type sandwiches on the menu. So if you don't like that, um, you can get something else. And they were one of the most cost uh, effective. The Thirsty Whale is just down the street and they're a bar and a pub and they had excellent prices on seafood and they had a great sampler platter if you want a little bit of everything fried scallops clams and whatnot um, they were a really good little place and very reasonable prices so those are 10 things about Acadia Park um, some of them more important than others but we had a fantastic time here and I could easily see us going back um, many times. It was just beautiful. There's so much to do. It's, if it's even remotely on your list, you absolutely need to bump it up because you're going to love it. All right. Thanks, y'all. Hope you enjoyed the pictures. We'll catch y'all later.